Now, let's look at one of the most common mistakes that people have when they start their sumigation journey. Um, I'm going to have uh, my training partner stand in front of me in a strong, rooted stance, and uh, I want you to look and pay attention to my left foot, okay? Please understand that in sumigation, you have two legs. You have an elevating leg and you have a drive leg, okay? So as we lock up with each, with each other in this position, I step in on my training partner. As I come up and I step in with the penetration foot, I come in like so. This creates an elevation leg that hooks into my training partner's body and elevates my training partner. And I have a drive leg that pushes off the floor. It, my knee can face the ceiling like so, or my knee can face out like so. They're both pretty good options. I've seen champions use both, okay? I personally prefer this one because I get a stronger drive, like a bridging motion. The most common mistake I see with beginners, if you just excuse me, Giancarlo, is they do something like this. They jump in and they have no connection to the floor. They jump in and they put both legs up and they flop like so. And it just looks like an embarrassing disaster, okay? You have to have a foot locked on the floor so that one foot pushes off the mat and the second foot elevates. Only when my opponent loses balance and topples does the drive leg come off the mat so you can come up on top and pin your opponent. Don't take the drive leg off until your opponent is actually thrown, okay? I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it all goes wrong. So here's the common beginner's mistake. You lock up, you get grips on each other, you step in and you try to throw with two feet and you have no connection to the floor. Okay, and you end up with this kind of embarrassing looking sumigation where you, you look like a girl on a bad prom night, okay? Um, you have to have an initial connection to the mat and a concerted drive leg creating power off the floor and an elevation leg that knocks your opponent's head past your head. So it should look something like this. We lock up with our training partner. We come in, I create the conditions for success by stepping in and then from here, one leg stays connected to the mat for the longest possible time and only when he's throwing does my foot leave the mat and I back roll into position, okay? Don't just take two feet and try to elevate. You, you'll never move anyone like that. You need connection with the floor with one foot and elevation with, you, with your other foot to throw someone. Only when he's been thrown do you take the dry foot off the mat and rotate through. So there's a definite sequence here where we lock up with a training partner we step in and we throw like so. Only when he's thrown does this foot come off the mat and we come over into top position. Okay, very important detail. 